Hi guys, welcome back to PBTV. We are very excited to have a little bit of a chat about the uh, new range from Delta Armouries. So we've had Delta Armouries for a little bit now, getting a, a few different models in. Uh, so this is a new uh, sort of sub-range in the Delta Armoury brand, and this is the Freya series. So this is a pre-upgraded platform. Uh, there's a lot of different options, but as always, we'll go through its uh, its features, uh, its MOSFET capabilities, its build, its very uniqueness, uh, and all that stuff. But first, uh, I'm gonna sort of chat about the um, sort of the 13 and a half inch one, but there's various different colors. So it does come in black. So uh, we've got the 13.5 in black there. We do have the Freya Mark 18. So the receiver is similar. We do have the same stock. Uh, and we have the Mark 18 style front if you want something a little bit more standard. Uh, it does come in a shorter CQB uh, platform as well. So we do have the seven inch. This does only come in black at the moment, uh, but more colors will follow very soon. And we do have a very nice sort of uh, dual tone dark earth. I think the tan and black is a very cool combo there and will be very, very popular. But we're going to look at uh, a uh, the platform. You don't really see it very often, uh, but yes, we have the OD green 13.5-inch um, rail. Um, so this thing does... Um, a lot of uh, sort of tech has been thrown into this for a, a very sort of budget friendly platform. So we'll go over its externals, um, see where, see how it's uh, a little bit different. You'll be able to see straight away on the receiver and everything like that. And then we'll dive inside and see what this thing's MOSFET is capable. And later on, we'll throw some BBs down a range so you can see uh, what this thing would do on a field if you had one in your hands. So as always, from uh, front to back, we do have a 40 mil counterclockwise thread on the front there, uh, and personally, the greatest uh, muzzle brake, the best looking muzzle brake that you can get in Airsoft, uh, the 556. Uh, I run these on multiple of my platforms because I just think they look really uh, sort of angry, snub, mean. Uh, I think it's uh, the sort of best, my favorite um, flash hider that you can get on a platform, and I run it on multiple of mine. And it comes as standard on the Freya. Uh, as always, you do have the 40 mil counterclockwise, so if you do want to take that off, you can throw traces, anything, suppressors, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, there is no gap between the end of the thread and the flash hider. So if you are going to get a uh, trace unit, it will butt up flush to the rail and look really, really sweet. Um, I always like it when there's, there's no gap there, and it's always uh, sort of almost like an integrated system. Coming back, we do have uh, pop-up uh, front and rear iron sights as standard, pre-fitted, uh, and then the rail uh, is a sort of very unique system. So we have a little bit of M-lock right at the front here, sort of two and a half sections. So that's on the right and left, uh, and full M-lock all across the bottom. At the back, all this is just uh, cut away for weight saving. Um, there's, so you, you can only really put accessories at the front, but there's not many accessories that get put at the side at the back. So it's just a little bit of thought process from um, the designers that if we can make this bit lighter, most accessories get put on the front. So that's where the M-lock sections are. We have 20 mil riz all the way across the uh, top. So again, pec boxes, all that kind of stuff that you wanna put on there will uh, just fit straight on here. If you wanted to put grips or anything on, it either needs to be an M-lock or just get a little M-lock rail adapter. The receiver, so again, another unique uh, looking platform. Uh, it'll almost look like there's some bits missing. Uh, there is no uh, bolt uh, sort of door or anything like that because real world, they're not really needed that much. Bolts are sealed enough, but again, airsoft, it's all just for looks uh, and the brass deflector is slightly different to what you normally see. Controls wise, it is slightly right-handed dominant. So we have the mag release on the right-hand side, fire control on the left uh, and the ping pong paddle on the left-hand side as well. Pulling back, uh, we do uh, have a lockback system uh, and you'll find a rotary hop inside. You'll hear me hop on about these of how good they are compared to the standard wheel ones. They do hold the hop a lot better uh, and have much, much less chance of the sort of slipping and changing whilst you're in game. Touching the ping pong, drops it forward and you're good to go. Uh, simple mag release, mag drops out and you do get a mid cap magazine. Uh, it is a 120 round mag that comes with it. Uh, we'll come on to the fire selector, but as standard, it is safe, semi, and full auto on the left-hand side, but it is fully programmable, so we'll have a, a quicker look at that in a second. Uh, very nice ergonomic grip on this thing, uh, slightly more vertical, uh, so it is really, really comfortable, even if you're in a prone or uh, sort of getting really down 
close to the ground rather than being stood. These vertical grips are getting quite uh, common, but not quite as vertical as the real steel because you've still got to fit a motor in there. Coming back to the stock, it is a sort of almost like lightweight sort of uh, high speed low drag style stock. It's got six positions. Uh, and again, there is a button on the back to drop the back down and fit your battery in there. At the back, you will find a Dean's connector. Um, this is a 7.4 platform, um, basically because of, we don't want to cause any pre-engagement or anything like that. So stick to your 7.4s. It's our power limits that cause this. Nothing to do with the platform. Uh, the piston can't, uh, the spring can't push the piston forward fast enough before the gears come around if you start using 11 uh, and that's when you can start losing uh, teeth on the gears or the rack on the piston. So stick to a 7.4. It is fast enough. It is uh, responsive enough on that anyway with the MOSFET. Uh, so you don't want to cause any uh, unforeseen damages by using an 11.1. So looking at the trigger system, uh, this uh, the MOSFET in here is fully controlled by the trigger and can be fully adjusted by the trigger and all the settings and everything like that. There is a full uh, instructions of how to go through it and it's basically like a menu system where you turn features on and off through a cascading menu system. Some of the features that you have, obviously we currently have it set on safe, fire and full auto. You have an option for anywhere between three and five round burst. Uh, and again, that can be set on the single or the full auto. Um, so you can have semi and burst. Uh, you have um, binary options. Again, binary is becoming almost a standard uh, in most things, but a lot of sites still deem it as full auto. Uh, I understand why it is a, uh, a very potent um, feature to have on a platform, but I do would still agree that it is still counted as full auto. The amount of sort of firepower you can put down with binary is very oppressive, but it's uh, a very, very good way to sort of uh, alleviate that um, that full auto ammo dump that you have sometimes. Going th uh, Running uh, some platforms on full auto, you'll burn through mags very, very quickly. With binary, you'll probably get the same sort of effective fire down range, but use maybe two thirds of the rounds. So you're gonna keep, uh, keep yourself in the fight for longer with binary if you're allowed to use it. Uh, we also have a semi-only system. Again, we do have a 14-inch uh, platform here. So if you're wanting to sort of change the soap suppressor and change this into a DMR, you can el electronically lock this to semi. Uh, so you can have safe semi and semi in all uh, the settings. So again, if your site allows that and it deems that that is acceptable for a DMR, you can do that. Not only that, you can also set these up as a sniper as well. So what you can have on these is what's called a sniper delay. Um, you can basically, once that is set up, there is, you can pull the trigger and then it won't let you, you can pull the trigger as many times as you want, but it will not release another round until a certain time has passed. A very similar to a, a bolt pull, sort of 1.52 seconds, um, depending on your site, depending on the time scale that they put in place, you can have this set up at as a, basically a 500 FPS platform on something that is semi-auto. Again, make sure you're allowed to do it and make sure your site allows sniper delay platforms as an option. Uh, and you you will be good to go. Uh, there is also org mode on this. So uh, again, it's uh, not a, a common feature, but it's becoming more and more prevalent in MOSFET builds uh, because it's basically a byproduct of probably the, the systems that are in there that you can fire on semi all day long. And then if you pull and hold after X amount of time, it will then go into full auto again. Please be aware that if you have this setting and you're playing in CQB and you hold your trigger for too long, you may full auto indoors. But again, you can turn these on and off very, very easily with the trigger system. It does take a minute or two, but if you're gonna go to a CQB site and they don't allow it, you can turn it off and it means you'll still be able to use your platform uh, and have some fun with it. There is also pre-cocking on this. Again, an absolute staple. Uh, I find it almost difficult to use the platform without pre-cocking on it now because I've got so used to it. Um, that, that sort of instant trigger response just means that that's, that them snapshots are so fast, so quick, you can get that shot off uh, before other platforms that are running a standard system. So these are uh, just a, a sort of tickle of the features that this thing has. Uh, but I think what we'll do is we'll go and take this up to the range, uh, put some rounds through it, do a little bit of an accuracy test, show you some of these features actually uh, being used down range so you can see how effective they will be on a field. So if you want to join me on the range, we'll, uh, we'll head up there now. Hi guys, you join us on the range. We have the R15 Freya and we're just gonna do a quick accuracy test before we go through this thing's features. So semi auto. Semi auto. And full auto. So 
So join us in a minute when we go through binary, org mode, and maybe even sniper delay. Hi guys, so you join us on our 50 meter outdoor range. We've got two targets set up. We've got a little bucket at 30 meters and one at 50 meters. So we're gonna see what the Freya is like at uh, slightly different ranges. We do have a run cam on here, uh, so we can see what the trajectory is like. We've set the hop for 0.28 BBs, and we've set a little bit of pre-cocking on just for a bit of response. And as you can hear, we've also set a microphone up on the far target so you can hear every single hit. So what we're going to do now is preset some of the uh, trigger settings, come back and show you how they function. So we're back on the range, guys. We've done a bit of settings. As you can see, there is a QR code in the stock. Scanning that gets you to the instruction manual for both the Eagle and the ETU series. So when you do scan that with your phone, make sure you select the right one. This is the Eagle series. So what we've done now, we've scanned that, gone through the trigger settings, and we've set up binary version and burst mode. So what binary mode is, is every time we pull the trigger and release the trigger, it will fire. And then in full auto, we have a three round burst set up. So that looks like this. And then the burst. Nice and simple. So all the settings on this, you have a choice of what you want semi-auto to do and what you want full auto to do. You can do uh, just straight semi on both. If you want to do this as a DMR or you can set it up as a sniper delay. What that allows you to do is this breaks the trigger for X amount of seconds, gives you an audible beep on the grip and allows you to shoot again. That means you can go up to a slightly higher power and run this as a sniper rifle rather than just a DMR. You've also got five different pre-cocking settings, active braking and various different things. So when you get this, you can scan that QR code and it gives you a full description of how to go through it and how to set this trigger up so you can run this exactly how you want.